the ocean is home to an abundant array of life. It's a mysterious place full of unique animals and plants. Some of its inhabitants seem strange enough to be from another planet. Luckily, there are people whose job is unlocking the mysteries of the deep. They explore the ocean depths to learn all they can about the fascinating creatures that live there. In the giant screen movie, Dolphins, audiences get a rare opportunity to meet these marine mammals face to face, to explore their world, and meet the people who spend their lives learning all about them. Most of my life I've been studying dolphins, and, and that's what showcased in the film that part of my, of my job. I'm a dolphin biologist or a dolphin behaviorist um, because I study dolphin behavior and dolphin communication. Scientists like Alejandro and Kathleen investigate our world to help us learn and understand. I think a scientist collects pieces of information and then to tell us a story. It's someone who likes to investigate and put together a puzzle piece and take all those pieces and get the whole picture. We have to find possible solutions to be able to tell the story, just like a detective. So uh, I like to see myself as a detective. Marine biology is the study of organisms in the ocean. It's the study of animals and plants that live in the sea. My specialty is that I study how dolphins communicate with one another, dolphin to dolphin communication. I want to study how they interact and how they behave with one another, what's acceptable manners between dolphins. My job has many different facets. I go out and I gather data. I study dolphins in the wild which means I'm on a boat a lot of times when I'm gathering my data. I'm underwater with the dolphins. I swim with the dolphins to gather their, their vocalizations and behavior. But I also spend a lot of time analyzing the data. For every hour of data that I gather, for every hour of video that I record, there's about 10 to 15 hours of analysis time. And that includes watching the behavior, identifying the dolphins, digitizing the sounds on the computer. There's field work and there's lab work. I became interested in marine sciences when I was a little kid. <laughs> when I was just a teeny boy. We used to go to the ocean a lot when we were kids for summer, for vacation, and just got me started. That combination of animals and the ocean just was, was it for me, and I was, I was just a toddler. I remember having a love of the ocean at an early age and loving animals, but I didn't know until college that I could actually find a career in both working with animals and the ocean. You know, when I was a kid, I always loved animals. And since then, I realized I want to be a doctor. I mean, it was really a childhood dream. I want to learn how animals behave and why they do things they do. And to do that, it seems that I have to be a doctor. So darn, I'll be a doctor. <laughs> the first thing I remember is watching dolphins from a boat. That's, as I recall, my first experience with marine life. I was amazed, and I've always been amazed about dolphins. I just find it wonderful that they just come up to breathe and surface and do their thing. Whether they come to the boat or whether they leave or do other things, that's secondary. To me, just, just watching them come out is just amazing. I just will always remember the first time I saw a dolphin underwater in the wild. It's flashing through my eyes now. I can remember seeing the animal approach me. Just seeing that animal swim through the water was just an amazing experience. Well, my first job that I consider was when I was a volunteer intern. It was my first experience doing this work. And then after that, I assisted other graduate students at the Mystic Marine Life Aquarium by helping observe the belugas there or observing the dolphins and collecting poop <laughs> for, for a study for a graduate student that was doing that. I was in, <sighs> I had to stand up on the deck and we were wired with radios and I had this long pole with this little net, this like tiny little net on it and she'd tell me when they pooped and we'd take the net and I'd have to collect it. I'd say the pooper scooper job was, was you know, lowest level you could go, but it was fun. You know, my first job as a scientist was working with gray whales. That's what I have such a major soft crush on, on, on gray whales. And I was a research assistant. We were studying the migration patterns of, of gray whales. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. What exactly do you do? Do you go out every day and go on a boat and go look at dolphins, or do you study them on a computer or something? Because of my work, yes, I go out in a boat. A typical day will be to wake up at the crock of dawn, 
tell my assistants or friends to come over, then spend the whole day out there in the water. And then we come back at sunset, then you go back into the lab or into an office. When I was in the Bahamas, I lived on the boat. So six months out of the year, I was on the boat every day. It's a very diverse life. I don't really have an average day. I think that's, that's one of the things that I love about the work that I do is that every day is different. Our day as a scientist depends on, on whether we are collecting data in the field or analyzing data in the lab. If I'm out on the water, I'm in my gear and I have my camera system and I get in the water and start recording whenever I can. One thing that I find fascinating about being a scientist is that you get to wear many hats. So I need to, I need to know to learn how to camp. I have to pitch a tent. I need to know how to drive a boat. I need to learn how to navigate in the ocean. I need to know how to fix a boat. I need to learn about the nature around me. I mean, I need to know whether I'm going to a dangerous place as far as there are poisonous animals. Uh, can I eat this plant? That I find fascinating. I think the steps to becoming a marine biologist are similar to the steps to becoming any kind of a scientist. You should have a strong background in some of the basic sciences. Do you have to be good at math? Well, it helps. Um, I didn't really like math the first time I took it. In fact, I hated geometry. Just wait till you get to that point. It's really good to do some volunteer work um, at a local pet shelter with a, with a veterinary clinic. You can go out into your backyard and watch an animal and take notes on what the animal is doing. You can do that on your own dog. You can do that on birds that you see. The best time, in my opinion, to do that is when you're you know, a student. There's so many different opportunities for work in this area. You can volunteer at a local aquarium, maybe become an aquarist. What does an aquarist do? I mean, what is, what is that position here at the aquarium? Well, basically our uh, function here is to take care of the animals. So we usually get here before opening, we set up all of the exhibits to make sure they're all really nice and clean. The job I have here as an aquarist really involves a lot of physical work and uh, not necessarily a lot of math or physics. We can do feedings at various exhibits. We can go collecting. Maybe we need to go diving or tide pooling or out to collect plankton using a plankton net. Keep busy. You can go for a veterinary technician job. There are animal caregivers. A lot of jobs like that require a lot of hands-on experience. There are tons of jobs working with marine life without having to be a scientist. There's people that need to train animals. There's people that need to take care of the animals. You can be a naturalist and take people into excursions or expeditions and you just have a blast of a time. The really neat thing for marine science is that there are many aspects you can go into. It really depends on where your interests lie and what you want to do. So how can a little kid become a marine biologist? I don't think there's a recipe, but I learned a lot from my experience and from the experience of others. And I think some key aspects are you have to be a good student. You have to have discipline and you have to like to learn. And just remember that uh, there's always an opening. There's always a, a silver lining. Both of my parents have been exceptionally supportive. And not just my parents, my sisters and uh, my grandparents. My dad has always said, listen, you know, you have to put a roof over your head and you have to put food on your table, but you have to love what you do as well. And if you can't be happy with what you do every day, then you shouldn't do it. You know, I feel very lucky to have that. You know, my family has always been supportive of me, and I think that has partly to do with Mexican culture. We are very family-oriented, we are very passionate, we are very emotional. And I think that reflected on the treatment my family gave to me. They just think I'm crazy, but they know I'm happy. And they always supported me, and I, I think that has made a great difference in my career. Yeah, I love what I do. I couldn't see myself doing anything else. But if I can't share it with other people, and not just colleagues, not just scientists, but if I can't share it with everybody, then to me there's no point in doing it. I love talking to kids, I love talking to people, and telling them, you know, this is what I do. This is what I find fascinating about nature, and I hope you can see it why I like it that way. And hopefully you like it too, but even if you don't, at least you go, wow, this guy's nuts. But hey, he's happy doing what he does. I think anybody can get started in marine sciences. I would just say, find the ways that you can get the support to do it. Find the people who are willing to be there to talk to you and support you through what you do. And don't listen to the naysayers, because you can do what you set your mind to. And I'm a firm believer in that. How long do you train to become like a dolphin scientist? Four years of college and then six years of graduate school. So besides going up to high school, which is 12 years, it was 10 extra years. 
What sort of things do you get to do when you're a dolphin scientist? What I like to do is to snorkel and just go out there and explore little things and this rock and the fish and all those things. Are you guys good swimmers? <laughs> I think so. I like to swim. It helps if you're going to do in the water work to know how to swim at least. Who can hold their breath longer? That's a trick question. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> she can hold it a lot longer. I can manage to swim, but no, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm definitely not a good swimmer. So there's hope.